it is your buddy, peace and harmony with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful empowered harmonizers. We are zooming in and focusing in a little bit more in depth in terms of understanding a psychopathic um, sort of technique of their victims, the people whom they are sort of indoctrinating into their group, which is known as brainwashing people who are psychopathic really are operating with an absence of conscience. They have a lack of morality. They have a, li a lack of sort of that, that, um, that right or wrong, that sense of this would be across the line, this would be hurtful, this would be damaging, this would be destructive, and then this is okay. So when it comes to that line, that boundary, they are, are tend have a tendency to feel no problem with blowing right past it, through surpassing it through violating that boundary and just going and doing as they desire. They have a sense of sort of incorrigibility, meaning that they, they're, they're very resistive to change because they don't feel the set of emotions that the rest of the population does. When someone is psychopathic, they're really not experiencing the whole full range of emotions that the human being will experience, particularly love, fear, remorse, regret. They're, they're not feeling humanity, brotherhood, sisterhood, wanting to sort of evolve, you know, these sort of, you know, save the environment, these sort of abstracts, if you will. Um, when we talk about freedom, that is an intangible, that is, you know, a, um, an abstract. When we talk about love, that is, although we can see examples of it, that is an abstract, just like we talk about abstract painting, abstract art. You know, it is suggestive, but it's it's an emotion, it's a feeling. And these individuals are sort of depleted of this experience. They are more on the aggressive, meaning there's going to some, be something that they want. And so what sort of fills them up is the need for power and control. Power over others and control. This is where they like to be. As we've been saying in videos previously, like leading, you know, an animal through a hook through its nose, leading others by the nose. Um, and, you know, one of the ways that they will accomplish this is through the tendency towards brainwashing, which means they're sort of going to kind of remove your sense of identity, your sense of I am, how you feel as a person. You know, just that normal state where you feel, you know, safe, secure, you're a person, you're a human being, um, you're defining as, you know, a man, a woman, you know, what, what have you, you know who you are, who you stand for, and you know how to conduct yourself and you know how to function, you know how to make it in the world, you know what you need to do, you know, the relationships, the finances, the profession, the rest the diet, you know, all those areas of life that you need to have your I am and be able to navigate from such. When we talk about from, when we talk about a relationship or an experience with someone who is psychopathic, we're talking about someone who will use a number of techniques in order to get others under the guise of their control, you know, marching to the tune of their drum, doing what they want and re removing power from you. Removing power from you. Removing power to think for yourself. Act for yourself. Feel for yourself and know for yourself. It doesn't get any more really replete than this. Um, so a lot of people don't understand that, you know, someone in your family could do this. Someone who you're married to could do this. Someone in your workplace could do this. Someone in life could do this. You know, you think this could only happen if you were in a concentration camp or if you were, you know, a prisoner of war. Some people don't, you know, know that this exists in the world at large. And so psychopaths are thought to be between 1 and 4% of the population. So we're not, we're, we're not talking about you know, uh, we're, we're talking about a real, you know, pretty substantial when, when you think about it and that, you know, basically in the course of your life, you're probably going to encounter 
this type of individual. So it's very important to be educated, informed, and have knowledge about this type of person and the experience and how to back it off and how to protect yourself and lead a good life, a happy life moving forward, despite the degree to which you have encountered these individuals. Namely, you know, we're looking at the experience um, of what a psychopath will do, which is brainwashing, removing someone's I am, removing their identity, removing that drive, removing that experience, that fullness of character, that autonomy, feeling whole, I am. In other words, I am a male, I'm a female, I'm a doctor, I'm, you know, a um, a curdle, you know, a cattle driver, I'm a woodworker, I'm a IT person, I'm a mother, I'm a father, I'm a wife, I am. So they will break this down, namely by breaking people down. They want, you know, a psychopath in the love bombing, they'll want you to sort of feel this, I can take care of you, I have your needs, I have your best interests, let me do it all for you. All of a sudden, you know, this person seems to be the fit like a glove. They might even say that, you know, I'm the best for you. You're the best for me. It's you and me against the world. This is the love that we see in movies. Um, you know, you could write songs about us. I mean, they might say all these things or they might really edge others out, you know, through isolation, through scapegoating, through targeting and through isolation to sort of break you down that way. But namely, they're going to try to break down and control the data with, with which is entering your senses. They're going to try to put a filter up, namely that through guilt and loss of I am. And, you know, the screen, the filter that they want to see it through is that I am, you know, the best. I am the authority over this. I am your savior is sort of the message. I'm your savior. I'm your confidant. No one else is like me. Um, I understand you better than anybody else. And so they sort of take this authority. Um, and this can be, once again, in the beginning, it can be a welcome experience. But when they, when a psychopath will break others down through pathological lying, through high risk behaviors, through violating others' boundaries. Um, and, so, you know, and again, they will sort of pursue this devoid of conscience, devoid of if it's right for you or wrong for you, if it's helpful or destructive, it makes no difference. The psychopath does not operate by this sense of morality. They will violate this, you know, uh, on, on the daily. This is not some, you know, a once in a time, once in a whirlwind. This is what they do consistently, chronically, and people will eventually get to feel this as their suffering increases in the relationship and they feel that there's something going on, there's something hazardous, there's something not right. And you feel sort of um, resourceless to you know, either create new relationships. A lot of people after being brainwashed can feel very resourceless, lacking their I am, lacking their ego strength, their I am strength, to go out and sort of make relationships either with their previous uh, people in their in their life or new, they will feel a hesitancy because they're under the control and they're sort of allowing this to really seep in. And so a lot of people begin to doubt themselves and doubt that, um, you know, that they should make a move, that they sort of end up surrendering to this brainwashing, namely that of sort of grooming you to be constantly focused on them that they are special, that they are unique, that they are powerful, that they are different from the rest of anyone and anyone else that you know. In other words, they're sort of this mystery, enigma, puzzling aspect to the way that they communicate. A lot of people get hooked, they get fascinated, they think it's funny, they think it's stimulating. They then welcome this hyper arousal in this sort of delusion of I am. It, it's sort of being scraped away they, and they, they feel that it's being replaced with this relationship and with this something better, you know, but that couldn't be any more to the contrary. When a psychopath is brainwashing, realize that they have, you know, this tendency to violate boundaries, which means, and this is boundaries of time, boundaries of physical boundaries, boundaries of phys you know, physical boundaries spiritual boundaries, psychological and emotional. So taking over 
your place, what I call your internal climate, your internal real estate, which is so important for you to protect, keep away from vandals being broken down, you know, people tearing it apart, looking for the copper, and then, you know, leaving you vandalized is kind of like that internal real estate that we're referring to. And they will, they will break you down through sort of, um, sort of catering to your needs or your unforeseen needs. So you didn't know that you need somebody, you know, to be this and this away to, you know, always be texting or always be sending pictures or start taking pictures or start talking to you in a specific way. Start opening up the door for you. Start leading your meetings. Start taking care of your kids. Start paying your bills. Start, you know, so they're, you know, little gifts that, you know, no one else would ever give you. You know, that is so thoughtful. Taking you for a walk, you know, no one has ever done this before. You know, giving you chocolates, giving you flowers, whatever it is, you know, taking care of, um, you know, your devices. If this is your weakness, you know, all of a sudden they come in like the knight in shining armor and it feels as if this is the answer. All of a sudden they've got your life in good working order again. This is the psychopath and how they begin the love bombing and then getting control over you. And, and so really when they begin the breaking down process, it's there, you know, it's really so that you kind of give them that, wow, you know, and that you're then giving them all of your attention and your guard is down and you're just allowing them free reign to continue in the relationship. So it's an unspoken, you might have, you know, um, sweet nothings, you know, oh, our relationship is so big. Our relationship is such this. You're the answer. You know, you might have all these back and forth, but the psychopath oftentimes is asexual, meaning even in the hyper arousal or in those intimate relationships, they're using that as a method to get you physically aroused and then keep that as a sort of dominance bond <clears throat> through a hyper arousal and then always thinking about them. I can't wait to see you the next time. I can barely sleep. You know, let's not do this. Let's, you know, let's, it's just you and I, all of a sudden, you know, they're skipping um, situations with family. They're skipping this, that, and the other thing. And then it becomes this new relationship, which is, gets really hot and heavy really quickly. It's off the charts. You know, this is the one, you know, you have all these, you know, epiphany experiences. But par part of the problem is that once they've gotten in and they've violated that boundary, and then there's what's known in psychology as a meshment, that a meshment can become where it's like the we, but then it's the removal of the you, the I am, what you really need to see clearly and namely the pres presence of guilt. You begin to sort of stand up, call things out, challenge things. Um, and then there's this feeling that what's wrong with you? You know, you should be so ashamed of yourself, you know, and then there's this laying on of the guilt, um, that, you know, that you are wrong to question it, that you are wrong, you know, and they might be sort of laughing when they see that you're catching on, they might, you know, be knowing to yourself, oh, okay, well, and they might be even in control of this, um, where they're allowing you to sort of leave their phone open, you know, and check their phone, you know, keeping their calendar open, and sort of watching you, just sort of, what are you gonna do now? You know, when you begin to sort of catch on to the antics, expose them in a series of pathological lies. Um, meaning, you know, really ongoing, serious, chronic, and, you know, just speaking what they want. And even though it doesn't have anything to do with the truth. Um, and so this can be part of the brainwashing, the corrosion of your identity and your I am, but furthermore, the guilt then is then set up for you standing up for what you want, what is right, talking to the right people. And the guilt can be very strong, very powerful, and it can be fear-based. So then the relationship then becomes based in fear. I don't understand this person. I don't understand how they're communicating. I become like then you have to be like an investigator, figuring out the word salad. What do they mean by this? What do they mean by that? You're, you know, the psychopath will try to then leave just sort of these mystery clues, if you will. I call it kind of a psychopath calling card where they'll do strange things. They um, might leave strange receipts out, um, etch things in the furniture, um, have books, you know, with lipstick in it, um, fingernail polish to, you know, sort of planting 
these clues, if you will, that will tend to drive other people up a wall, driving them crazy, trying to figure out what is this person trying to communicate to me? And they will lead them along this mystery um, type of uh, communication for weeks, months, and even, um, you know, decades and years, you know, and the, the brainwashing can be very, very severe and very complete, meaning you're completely deluded, you're completely uh, asphyxiated with this person, you're like addicted. Um, and then the, the brainwashing though, well the part of it, you know, getting it even deeper, corroding your sense of I am, your identity, will be sort of a guilt then with identifying with your needs. You then feel guilty for, you know, wanting to break free, guilty for wanting to stand up, guilty for, and because the brainwashing then, they might want to then increase a lot of toxic behaviors, you know, creating a lot of angst in others, creating a lot of confusion, a lot of rebelliousness, wanting to call them out. You know, I have a lot of viewers um, and a lot of uh, people who I've spoke to who have then this need for retaliation, legal retaliation, wanting uh, to, rep you know, um, uh, you know, do things like have um, just sort of, you know, uh, legal issues with them. Um, just running, you know, I don't want them to do this to anybody else. So want, wanting this retaliation, this feeling, you know, and so, you know, wanting to set the, set the justice right when, you know, there's this guilt. Um, and so a lot of people then can, you know, have this sort of reactiveness, wanting to fight back, make it their mission to make sure that this person, you know, gets in big trouble. Um, you know, they'll then spend their life focus and their life mission, you know, trying to uh, settle the score, going to endless legal battles, etc. Um, and so the guilt can weigh very heavily and be dysfunctional. People then feel guilty sort of leaving this absence of character from this person. They become addicted. And guilt can be part of the addiction. You know, feeling that, you know, <clears throat> you know, guilty for leaving a relationship, particularly one that you don't emotionally or logically understand. I don't understand how this happened. You know, it was going so good and I found this out. Or, you know, and then guilt from sort of this, the, the guilt then sort of replaces your I am. The guilt is a very destructive and a very disabling emotion. Fear, it is based in fear. It is, you know, based in that hypervigilance, that hyper arousal, that trepidation. I can't make it. And then especially if you've been through the brainwashing, you might feel that all of your senses aren't online, that you're not all there, you know, that you're not focused. You don't have emotional strength, intellectual strength. You don't feel strong enough to face the world. You have people then who go into post-traumatic stress syndrome, afraid to leave the house, afraid to do the everyday, make phone calls, communicate, talk, come from a sense of self. They, they, it becomes a recovery of the I am, getting it out of that sort of emotional quicksand of guilt. Look at the experience of guilt. Guilt is a very strong indicator of brainwashing to get you sort of stuck in and under the control and guise and power of this individual or set of individuals. So this is a, a big red flag that if you can identify with the guilt, realize the guilt is a powerful um, shaper of behavior, but it can also be a powerful corrupter of I, I am and a corrupter of love. In other words, feeling guilty to have you know, um, to be able to have a true relationship that you're, they're always going to pull you back and sort of remind you, you know, that you don't have an I am, that you don't have who you are just sort of because they've had this undue influence that they're like the operating system, the hard drive of you. So it becomes very difficult to separate from these people. People feel like they have half a mind, half a heart, that they're half a woman, half a man. They don't have what it takes. They don't feel that they're strong enough. This oftentimes is because they've been laden and saddled with guilt. You know, guilt is a feeling that, you know, you are in the wrong. You are in the wrong. You're in the wrong for wanting to work for yourself. You're in the wrong for wanting to have a life. You're in the wrong for wanting to have the truth be known. You know, you're in the wrong for wanting to let the cat out of the bag. 
you know, and they can then try to solidify this with their looks, you know, the psychopathic look of guilt, just trying to nail you to the cross, you know, so you cannot move emotionally. This is a definite experience that comes as a result of brainwashing. So you need to understand it for what it is and release that guilt and release that fear that has been impregnated in you from someone who is trying to take control, manipulation, and power. This is your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today. I hope that these videos do help. Please share, please subscribe, and please donate for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support. You've also got the new Peace and Harmony membership that you can join for more discussion, tools, and resources. Have a beautiful day.